Hello, I'm Claudine from SomewhereLuxurious.com, the blog where travel meets reality TV. This time, let's chat a bit about love and hip hop Atlanta. Before I start though, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Then you'll be able to get updates whenever I upload a new video. Now let's get on to talking about love and hip hop. In this episode, Jocelyn first met with her event planners, Mimi and Shantae. Jocelyn wanted to have a baby shower that everyone would remember, and you bet she did. She wanted people swinging from the ceiling. She wanted strippers. She wanted the whole kid banging caboodle. There was a little bit of there was a little bit of uh, contradictions or disagreements between the event planners. It was all in good fun. It was really funny. I love seeing Mimi and Shantae together. They added a lot to the show. They were very entertaining. One of the event planners, who was Shantae, was more conservative. And Mimi was more in line with what Jocelyn wanted. So Mimi said that she would get strippers for Jocelyn, even if she had to go to Onyx herself and handpick them. All right now, Mimi, you go with your bad self. Shantae was said that she was a little bit said that she really wasn't feeling that, but her idea was to get ballet dancers. So can you imagine that? A baby shower with ballet dancers and strippers? Completely opposites, right? You know what happened. Next, we had Jocelyn and her brother Kermit getting together at a baby store called Baby Bella. Ladies, hold down, hold down. There was a lot of chatter on the internet about Kermit. A lot of women out there think that he's attractive. But hold your horses. This guy who was 20 at the time of the filming had a girlfriend who was at the time six months pregnant. Jocelyn wanted to talk to him about his responsibilities as a new father and she wanted to be clear that she wished that he was able to support the baby and mother. She didn't want Carmen to be like Stevie J and that he did not claim the baby or as an absent father. She wanted Carmen to be the best father that he could be. Jocelyn's idea cut Kermit off from money. However, if the baby needed something, she would give the baby money, but she was no longer going to support Kermit anymore. Apparently, Jocelyn gave her family money whenever they needed it. When she was in her teens, she worked or made money and was able to help her family whenever they came to her needing money. Jocelyn herself and her family members were not well off. She said that they were very poor. I know that there are some stories, probably shocking stories of just how poor they were or what they went through. I really respect Jocelyn for sharing that and talking about it. And maybe that will encourage other people to, well, not necessarily be, not necessarily follow exactly her path, but to do better to try to do better or just encourage them to reach their goals or pursue their dreams and do what they want to do in their lives. After that scene with Jocelyn and her brother in the baby store, Bonnie Bella, by the way, does not need any more clothes. That is what Jocelyn said. She was in there, I think, shopping with Kermit. I think Bonnie Bella has probably too much of everything by now. Jocelyn met with her Dola Tomikas. It was very important to Jocelyn throughout this episode. She kept saying over and over again how important it was that she be a good mother. Whether or not we like Jocelyn from what we see on the show, because we do not know these people, but from what we see on the show and the character that she portrays on the show, whether or not we like her or not, we do have to admire someone who is doing her best to be a good mother. 
Jocelyn wanted to have her baby underwater because she felt that that would be more comfortable for the baby. That, I think that that was great. I think that it's a good idea. I think that if she was able to do that, to have the baby be more comfortable, to have the baby not be so shocked when, she, when the baby is giving, when the baby is being born, I think that that it was one, it was a wonderful thought, and I'm glad that Jocelyn tried that. As we know, it didn't exactly work out that way. Stay tuned, and I'll tell you more about that. This episode was interesting because as the episode progressed, the planning of the baby shower, we saw snippets of Jocelyn going through the various phases of giving giving birth. The cameras even followed Jocelyn to the gym where at at least eight months pregnant, she worked out with her trainer. That girl was doing those deadlifts and I was so proud of her. I thought, we, women, ladies, we have no excuse. Women, we, we gain weight and we always say that it's the baby's it's the baby weight or this reason or that reason age different various reasons i think that if we did take the time to exercise regularly then a lot of the problems will be solved we could lose that weight i'm not saying that if you have a medical problem and you exercise is going to work i'm just saying for the average person who does not work out we need to get with it and Get with it and stop um, stop having so many excuses. Just go and do it. So that was that was another thing that I did like about this episode. I see, I have seen Jocelyn on her social media account. I've seen pictures of her jogging. So I already knew that she was a person who does exercise and was exercising during her pregnancy. I did not know that she was exercising so long into the pregnancy. So I definitely admire her for that. Jocelyn said that she was going to exercise until she could not exercise anymore. And while she was exercising with her trainer, she told her trainer about her desire or she mentioned about having pregnant sex with who else but Nikki Baby from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood? I had no idea, maybe I'm late, but I had no idea that Jocelyn and Nikki Baby had a thing going on. So I was trying to search my mental database to try to remember something about that. I didn't remember anything like that happening. I don't know if that is because of the cameras or whatnot. The next thing we know, there's a scene with Jocelyn and Nikki Baby wearing lingerie in the bed. Nikki Baby is rubbing Jocelyn's pregnant stomach and it looks like they're about to get it on. Jocelyn says that she is intimate with Nikki Baby whenever she can. Nikki Baby, of course, does live or have or resides, has a house or what have you in Hollywood in California. Jocelyn told Nikki Baby that she was invited to her baby shower and she can also be the guest of honor. Go for it, Nikki Baby and Jocelyn. That's all I can say about that. Let's go on. In the next, in the next part of the episode, we had the party. There were some familiar faces there like Mariah Lynn, Mama D showed up, Scrappy showed up. Mama D gave Bonnie Bella the cutest little crown, called her a princess, keeping with that I'm um, the queen and the, her whole persona of being a queen and the other people, everyone else are just her subjects. It was cute. I really liked it. I loved, I loved the way they carried that persona out. I loved the way they carried it through into the baby shower and the crown was just so precious. It was extremely precious. The best part of the show had to be the scenes when Jocelyn 
finally gave birth. You can tell that it was extremely painful. She had a hard delivery. I was surprised because I thought that when you exercise, you have an easier birth. Maybe that's an old wives tale. <laughs> In Jocelyn's case, I don't think that's true. I don't think it was true. Jocelyn was in a lot of pain. I don't think that she went through with the water birth. In fact, at one point she was going to go to the hospital. She was afraid that she might hurt the baby because she wasn't able to push or something like that. She did eventually have the baby in the birthing center. She gave birth to this really beautiful, lovely, doll-like. She, look, she looks like a doll. She looks so perfect, baby. And we really saw Jocelyn in a completely different light. Aside from the scenes with her family, cooking dinner, and talking with them in Spanish, and interacting with them, and her mother showing her or talking to her about being a mother. She said that she had brought her family to Atlanta so that she can be with them and her mother can help her with the baby and teach her some things about having the baby and being a mother to the baby. Aside from those things, those parts of the episode, this part was just beautiful. Jocelyn even has second thoughts and decided to call Stevie J and invite him to the hospital. So Stevie J saw the baby when she was right after she was born. He laid down with the baby on his chest, on his bare chest. And they looked like they really connected. Jocelyn said that she was going to be a, the bigger person or a bigger person and invite Stevie J to remain in the baby's life. So I'm so glad that Jocelyn changed her mind and decided not to push Stevie J out of the baby's life. One last thing, I did mention Jocelyn's family and I would not be surprised if we see more of her family. There was a lot of positive information or a lot of pot there was a lot of positive feedback about Jocelyn's brother so I can definitely imagine them having a some type of a spinoff with her family or maybe just her her brother in Miami raising the baby now I'm not saying that this is definitely going to ha going to happen but I can definitely imagine and envision that and I wonder if having your family there was a setup for a spinoff what do you think? Why don't you write your comments down below and tell me what you think? So this will be the end of the review chat about Love & Hip Hop Atlanta. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and rate this video. And I'll be talking to you next time. Come back to see my other videos on the shows that we all like to watch. Bye-bye.